Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to talk about osteomyelitis. So before going to details about osteomyelitis, we will be discussing about the main contents, what you are supposed to know. So the contents includes the definition of osteomyelitis, what are the predisposing factors, classification, and what is the difference between separative osteomyelitis and non-separative osteomyelitis. So osteomyelitis, by definition, it is an inflammation of the bone-forming elements with tendency to progression. So usually the infection or the inflammation start, begins in the medullary cavity and then it extends and spread to the cortical bone and it eventually reaches the periosteum. And what happens next is there will be invasion of bacteria into your cancellous bone, followed by uh, inflammation and edema in marrow spaces, compression of blood vessels, and later, which causes severe compromise of blood supply. So, the inadequate blood supply is a main factor as the involved area becomes ischemic and the bone becomes necrotic. So once that area becomes necrotic, the bacteria can then proliferate uh, because the normal blood-borne defenses do not reach the tissue site because already that area becomes ischemic. So then what happens? The osteomyelitis spreads until it's, it is stopped by either a medical or a surgical therapy. So, uh, when you compare the osteomyelitis uh, occurring in mandible and maxilla, mandible seems to be affected more than the maxilla. So, here is the reason why mandible is affected more than the maxilla. So, in mandible, it is uh, less perfused compared to maxilla because it is solely the perforated from the inferior alveolar artery. And one more thing is the overlying cortical bone in mandible is dense and it prevents penetration of periosteal blood vessels. So in uh, maxilla, when you look into maxilla, there will be blood supply which is much richer than mandible and it is derived from several arteries which form a complex of feeder vessels and the bone quality of maxilla it is less dense than mandible so what are the predisposing factors uh, for osteomyelitis to occur so first is uh, impaired immunity so if the patient is already having any uh, compromise of immunity, immunocompromised diseases, uh, there are chances that the patient may end up in osteomyelitis, but the patient should have a, either an odontogenic infection or a fracture of mandible or any other uh, oral or, or dental infections can cause osteomyelitis. And if there is impaired immunity, it adds to the uh, uh, risk factors. Okay, And if the patient is poorly nourished, and if the uh, patient is exposed to radiation, and if there is an impaired blood flow, uh, you can see there are uh, high chances of going into osteomyelitis. So, talking about the microbiology, so uh, the common microbiology, the common microbes, which is found in that osteomyelitic lesion is similar to those kind, those normally seen in odontogenic infections. Those are viridin uh, streptococci and strict anaerobes like bacteroids, Prevotella, Fusobacterium and Peptostreptococci species. So, 
the classification it is created by Hudson and it is simple to use. It is generally classified as acute osteomyelitis, chronic osteomyelitis. So acute osteomyelitis uh, have a contagious foci. The foci of infection can be very contagious and the, the, it is very, it can be progressive and it can spread through your bloodstream. That is hematogenous uh, spread. So if it spreads through your blood, uh, bloodstream, that can present for over one month. Unless and until you treat it, that can go for a uh, chronic stage. Then in chronic osteomyelitis, you have a recurrent multifocal. You have Gary's osteomyelitis, separative or non-separative osteomyelitis, and sclerosing osteomyelitis. So what are the clinical features of osteomyelitis of the facial region? There can be pain. Uh, there can be swelling and erythema of the overlying tissues. There is adenopathy fever and in later stages there can be paresthesia of your inferior alveolar nerve and uh, trismus can be seen and in acute cases if it is a systemic uh, systemically the uh, infection spreads it can be malaise or locally we can see fistulas so classification it is roughly divided into separative and non separative based on clinical features Separative is again classified as acute, then subacute and chronic, then infantile osteomyelitis, then comes here non-separative osteomyelitis. In that we have chronic diffuse sclerosing and Gary's sclerosing. So the separative osteomyelitis is the dominant form of osteomyelitis. It is characterized by pus formation and necrosis of bone. And it has two distinct forms, which can be acute and chronic. In acute form, infections, uh, which includes systemic effects. And in chronic, it, uh, it induces minimal systemic effects, but it will present there for a long time. Then, primary uh, chronic in that case, there is no acute episode of this osteomyelitic chain lesion. So, it is directly going into your chronic stage. Then comes your secondary chronic. It involves prolonged inflammatory process. So, what is the pathogenesis of osteomyelitis? Basically, the inflammation triggered by bacterial invasion into your marrow which induces a compromised microcirculation and increased pressure in the intramedullary site. So what happens later? It leads to vascular collapse, venous stasis, and ischemia, and eventually bone necrosis. Further multiplication of microorganisms and the resultant inflammation induce further necrosis of the surrounding bony tissue and resulting in extensive spread of infection. So what are the clinical features and stages? The acute symptoms last for one to two weeks. The local symptoms include swelling, which is minimal, and the fistulas are absent. That is a differentiating feature between an acute stage and a chronic stage. And there can be deep and intense pain. And a regional lymph nodes become enlarged and tender.
so coming back uh, we were discussing about clinical features and stages of acute osteomyelitis so the later purulent exudates erode the cortical bone and periosteum resulting into facial and submandibular cellulitis if masticatory muscles are affected trismus may occur and a throbbing pain in the jaw and severe tenderness and feeling of extrusion of teeth can also be seen so if it goes inside there can be vincent symptoms as the infection affects the inferior alveolar nerve and there can be pus discharge from gingival sulcus then multiple mucosal fistula become apparent and there is little or no radiographic changes in this stage so in acute stage you cannot see much of a radiographic changes compared to your uh, chronic stage in your chronic stage you can very much appreciate the uh, radiographic changes in the form of moth eaten appearance so in the systemic symptoms there is high intermittent fever there is chills malaise headache decreased appetite with spread of infection systemic toxic symptoms becomes more severe and sepsis can occur then infection is localized only in the intramedullary site so at this stage if uh, we treat with an acute adequate antibiotic it may prevent further progression of the disease if a patient is not much immuno compromised so we will continue the section in the next class